Donald Trump gave a press conference about the coronavirus and an update about it, and he put Mike Pence in charge of it. And I will tell you, overall, I was extremely thrilled with what he had to say, not just because, you know, of the little things he said. It was his tone about the whole thing, because if there's one thing I despise and if there's one thing you should be wary of your entire life, it's this. Any politician who tells you something is urgent, any politician who assures you that they're going to save you in some way. Both of, both of those things are almost always a lie, pretty much 100% of the time. So when he announced he was giving a press conference, I had hoped he would do a good job. He did a good job, but here's the reality of it. As we stand, the stock market's lost 1,200 points. Obviously, the people are a little bit freaked out there. There have been some deaths in other countries. We are seeing some people who are being isolated or quarantined. They call it isolated when they want to make you feel better about it here in the United States of America. That's the bad news. The good news is this. Remember Ebola? You may not remember Ebola. And you know why? Because it didn't really do anything. The Ebola virus is one of the worst viruses in the history of mankind. It is an ugly thing that apparently kills about everybody it touches and kills them in really ugly ways. And all of a sudden there was an outbreak and someone back here had it. And we were all going to die and everybody better stock up. And it got like one person. You know why? because you are blessed to live in the United States of America, where we have cleanliness here. We have an excellent healthcare system. We have a great knowledge of germs. We have access to clean water. We have plentiful amounts of food. No, I am not telling you that you have nothing to worry about and everything will be fine. That would be flat out cold and callous because there are people out there dying of this thing in this world. Apparently it does spread. But what I am telling you is take the proper precautions, yes, but don't let anybody tell you you're going to die. This is the end of this. this is the new black plague. It's really not. Calm down. Take a deep breath. Here's a little shot of the president. Because of all we've done, the risk <coughs> to the American people remains very low. And we have the greatest experts in the world, really in the world, right here. I'm going to be announcing uh, exactly right now that I'm going to be putting our Vice President Mike Pence in charge. And Mike will be working with the professionals, doctors, and everybody else that's working. The team is, is brilliant. I spent a lot of time with the team over the last couple of weeks, but they're totally brilliant. And we're doing really well. And Mike is going to be in charge, and Mike will report back to me. But he's got a certain talent for this. And uh, I'm going to ask Mike Pence to say a few words, please. Thank you, Mike. Uh, I look forward. Uh, Mr. President, to uh, serving uh, in this role, uh, bringing together uh, all the members of the Corona Task Force that you've established, HHS, CDC, DHS, the Department of Transportation, and State. Uh, this team has been at your direction, Mr. President, meeting every day since it was established. Uh, my role will be to continue to uh, uh, bring that team together, uh, to bring to the President the uh, uh, the best options for action to see to the safety and well-being and health of the American people. Uh, we'll also be continuing to reach out to governors, uh, state and local officials. Uh, in fact, in the recent days, uh, the White House met with over 40 state, county and city health officials from over 30 states and territories to discuss how to respond uh, to this, uh, to the potential threat of the coronavirus. Uh, we'll be working with them in renewed ways to make sure they have the resources uh, to be able to respond. And as the President said, uh, we'll be adding additional personnel here at the White House to uh, support our efforts on the President's behalf. I love the fact that he put Mike Pence in charge for a few reasons. One, he's been an executive before. He's been the big cheese when he was governor of Indiana, so he knows something about that. Two, Mike Pence has that tone about him that is important when you're talking to people like that. He has that very grandfatherly tone. Why don't you sit on my lap and, and let me give you a Werther's original and tell you why everything will be okay. And th look, that has value. I mean, I'm being tongue in cheek about it, but it has value, the voice of calm. But three, I like that he put the vice president in charge of it. It tells you the president of the United States is taking this seriously. I don't know how involved Mike Pence is actually going to be. I don't even know if he's all that capable of it. it it's a good symbol to the American people that Donald Trump is taking the problem seriously. And remember something. No matter what you've seen in the media today, no matter what you've seen, I saw Nancy Pelosi said some really ugly things about it that I'm not even going to play for you. 
about this is about Donald Trump and Trump shouldn't have done this and this is the Trump virus. I saw somebody actually, this is not a political thing, people. This is a deadly disease that is killing poor old people. It's killing people in poor health around the world. It is something that spreads fast and it's something that's already on the shores of the United States of America. It doesn't differentiate between Republicans and Democrats. And this isn't an indictment on the Democrats and it's not an indictment on Trump. It's a deadly disease like human beings have faced throughout the history of mankind. So anybody that tries to drag politics into this thing, blow that person off. It really has no place. Some things actually are beyond politics. When people are dying in hospital beds, that's one of those things. Donald Trump gave a very practical piece of advice that is honestly one of the most effective things in the world at preventing a disease. People are poking fun at him for this, but I mean, he's right. Any of their, of their behaviors? No, I think you have to always, you know, I do it a lot anyway, as you probably heard. Wash your hands, <laughs> stay clean. You don't have to necessarily grab every handrail unless you have to. You know, you do certain things that you do when you have the flu. I mean, view this the same as the flu. When somebody sneezes, I mean, I try and bail out as much as possible with the sneezing. I had a man come up to me a week ago. I hadn't seen him in a long time. And... I said, how are you doing? He said, fine, fine. He, hug, he hugs me, kiss me. I said, are you well? He says, no. <laughs> he said, I have the worst fever and the worst flu. And he's hugging and kissing me. So I said, excuse me. I went and I started washing my hands. So you have to do that. You know, this is, I, I really think, doctor, you want to treat this like you treat the flu, right? And, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be. When I, I want to have, have you, I love you. It was so nice of you to say thank you very much. That's the right tone. Make a little joke. It's also good advice. Wash your hands. Doesn't hurt to buy a couple extra gallons of water, maybe some batteries, get some dry goods in the house. You're not all going to die. Hey, thanks so much for watching the first on YouTube. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and like and subscribe. You heard me like it, subscribe. You'll get a lot more of it and a lot more me.